This episode is brought to you by Cox Home Life. Cox helps make your home smarter. And now you can pull up your Home Life cameras on your TV with your Contour voice remote and some simple voice commands. To learn more, visit cox.com slash this is home. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. If you're an influencer or a talent manager, today's commentary might make you a little uncomfortable. I'm just going to throw that out there as a warning. But I need you to bear with me. I'm going to dish some harsh realities out to our brand and agency side friends, too. We've been talking a lot lately about when to pay influencers. Last week's commentary answered a listener question about when to transition from paying with only product to adding cash to the mix. But we haven't really dug into why we pay influencers. And depending upon your perspective, the answer to that question is different. Influencers think we pay them for their talent. Brands think we pay them for their audiences. Talent managers think we pay them for a magical list of exhaustive qualities few of us ever pay attention to. And agencies think we pay influencers because they've duped the world into thinking they're effective. Well, sarcasm aside, the first thought of why we pay influencers has long been to get our message in front of their audience. But that why is all wrong. The problem is there are multiple whys in the equation. And those whys need to be considered by influencers and talent managers in how they price brand engagements. They also need to be understood by brands and agencies, so what they pay is fair. But what is fair pay for influencer and content creator engagement? We'll look at the various whys, and I'll share what I think is a direction towards fair in today's commentary. Before I do, we've been hearing directly from Pete Kennedy lately from Tagger. He's the founder and president of that influencer marketing platform, and it is the presenting sponsor of this podcast. Tagger just released a new feature called Signals. I like to think of it as a form of social listening, but specific to influencers and influencer topics. But As Pete and I discussed, it's not to be confused with social listening. I spent a lot of time in the mid to late 2000s um, kind of really getting immersed in the social listening space. And social listening has a very different definition depending upon who you ask, uh, you know, what the definition is and where their standing is in the, the greater social technology space. Signals to me is a light layer of social listening through the funnel of influencer marketing. Does that sound right to you? That's exactly right. We are not a social listening platform. That is not what Signals is. Signals is the first ever creator listening platform. So whereas social listening tools listen to what everyone has to say, um, and it tells you, you know, it's raining, but it doesn't tell you how to make it stop raining. Signals is all about the creator, listening to what they talk about in terms of industries, brands, topics, keywords. And then it gives you the strategies where you can actually change conversations for your own brand using the voice of creators. So, so exactly right. This is not a social listening platform. It is a creator listening platform. Thanks to Pete and to Tagger for the great product and for helping bring this podcast to you each week. To learn more and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for you, even if it's just to check out the new signals feature, just visit jason.online slash Tagger today. That's jason.online slash Tagger. The various whys we pay influencers and how to make that pay more fair for brands and creators. That's next on Winfluence. From Disney and Pixar. I'm Maylin Lee. I wear what I want, say what I want, 24-7, 365. Ah! What's happening to me? Streaming March 11th on Disney+. Plus. Our ancestors had a mystical connection with red pandas. Any strong emotion will release the panda. (laughs) I'm a furry digging tiger. Fight the power! <laughs> Disney and Pixar's Turning Red. Ready PG. Parental guidance suggested. Original movie streaming March 11th. Only on Disney+. Plus. For you brand and agency folks out there, think about the question for a moment. 
Why do you pay influencers? For you influencers, content creators, and talent managers in the audience, why do you think you get paid? Or more appropriately, what are all of the activities of value you should get paid for? I ask those questions because I don't think we all recognize the full scope of why an influencer should be paid. Now, don't jump the gun here, influencers and talent managers. I'm not necessarily about to say you should be paid more. I also don't think we value appropriately why we currently pay influencers. That part is going to sting the brand and agency folks a little, so bear with me. There's balance in today's argument. Here's the problem. Most brands assume they pay for access to the influencer's audience. They think of influencers as a media buy, and so they want to pay on the same scale, cost per thousand, or cost per performance. They tolerate these project-based prices because few influencers will charge any form of cost per rate. That opens up a can of worms problem on the influencer side. They won't charge CPMs because they probably can't deliver enough return on that audience access alone. But in that scenario, both sides are missing half of the why to make this make sense both ways. Brands need to recognize they pay influencers for two, and realistically three, whys. First, they pay for content creation. The influencer is just like a freelancer or consultant in that regard. The brand should be paying for the influencer's time. The good news for brands is at today's rates, they're probably paying for that somewhat fairly. They think they're paying for audience access. They're actually paying for the time to create the content. I don't think most brands are paying fairly for access to the influencer's audience, but I think influencers and talent managers grossly overvalue audience access. Here's my hypothesis there, and bear with me, it's a hypothesis. I share it to get your reaction and open the conversation. Try not to burn me in effigy just yet. I think influencers should charge for three things. There are three whys for brands to pay them. First, they should be paid for their time, just like a freelancer. If it takes an influencer 10 hours to create a series of posts for a brand campaign, they should charge an hourly rate for those 10 hours. Sure, some will say they believe in package pricing and they don't do hourly rates, but that's horseshit. The hourly rate is the package price divided by the hours you worked. It's math. It's not different. Second, Influencers should be paid if that content is used to access their audience, but that access should be performance-based. Brands should pay for how many actual audience members saw and or engaged with that content. Your follower count doesn't matter. What does is how many of those followers actually consume the content. I have some thoughts on how we value that in a moment. Finally, Influencers should be paid for the rights to use or own the content created. Like a freelancer or consultant, the influencer's work can be purchased by the brand to use on their website, social channels, advertisements, and such. If the brand doesn't use it, they only pay for the time and the audience access. If they do, there should be a premium on that content usage and intellectual property. One could argue that this is how talent managers and influencers price and charge today, but I don't think that's always true, and it's certainly not how brands see what they're paying for. Brands think if an influencer charges $2,000 for a post, it's costing them $2,000 to get their cute little social ad in front of the 100,000 followers that influencer has. That's a $20 CPM, or cost per thousand rate. The mentality here is not that they're paying for time or content. They're paying for access like they do an ad spend. And $20 as a CPM is digestible for them. It's more than pay-per-click or online media rates. It's on par with radio and television rates. And it's less than something like direct mail. But using the total number of followers as the base for a CPM calculation grossly overestimates what the influencer's audience is actually worth. Follower count is bullshit. It's a total number of possible audience members. TV stations don't charge based on the total population of their geographic reach. They charge based on the ratings that show what percentage of that audience actually watches. Same for radio. One could argue that print and outdoor rates are bullshit too, but that's for other podcasts to figure out. The value of an influencer's audience is in the number of them that either see or interact with the content. 
And this is where the influencers and talent managers start getting angry because they know that if they could only charge based on engagements or true impressions, they can't make much money. But hold on. I still think you should be paid for your time and usage rights. I'm not done. Remember, you got to bear with me till the end on this one. A good engagement rate for an influencer with 100,000 followers these days is, let's say, north of 2 or 3%. Some get into the teens and 20s. Hire them. They're good. But most earn south of 1%. Courtney Kardashian on Instagram, 1%. Now, 1% of 162 million people is still a lot of people, but look at a random influencer. I looked one up in the home and garden space called Plank and Pillow. They have 287,000 followers on Instagram. They have an engagement rate of 0.52%, not 52, 0.52%. But looking at engagement rates alone dismisses the value of an impression. I might see a post, but not engage with it. There's still value there. I propose that the right way to value access to an influencer's audience is to pay a CPM rate based on the number of impressions the content receives. Most platforms report that number. YouTube and TikTok do not. But you can count a view as an impression and be somewhat equitable there. Engagement is more valuable, so maybe you value actual engagements at a higher CPM rate. So if Plank and Pillow have 3,400 impressions on a post, they earn $68 for a $20 CPM rate. If they have 50 engagements on that post and you pay, let's say, a very high CPM rate of I'm just spitballing, but engagements are far more valuable. But at a $500 CPM rate and 50 engagements, that's an additional $25. So the value of the audience access is then $93. Here's where the bearing with me comes into play, influencers. Plank and Pillow should also be paid for their time in creating the content. Let's say they spent 10 hours doing a series of photos, editing them, meeting with the client, etc. They charge $150 per hour, so that's $1,500 plus the $93. Then, let's say the brand wants to use the content on the brand channels and in their ads. Unlimited usage rights could be, let's say, $500 per photo for five photos. That's another $2,500. Now you're charging $4,093 for the engagement. But the breakdown of why you're charging and what the brand is paying for is more accurate and fair. Influencers, talent managers, you don't lose out on money here. You just have to come to the harsh reality that your follower count and engagement rates are not where your practical value lies. Brands, agencies, you're not going to save money here and you might have to pay more, but you're going to better understand the true value of what an influencer provides you. They are far more than their audience count alone. Okay. My hypothesis is out there. I'm ready for the whole shooting. Record a voice memo with your reaction, criticisms, angry rants, or other feedback and send it via email. Or just send a regular email to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode. Have a question or topic related to influence or influence marketing you'd like my take on? Inspire an episode by emailing me at that same address, jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your question as a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast comes to you from the Marketing Podcast Network. I'm Shell Holtz, co-host of For Immediate Release, also on NPN. I'm Neville Hobson, co-host of FIR, where since 2005, Shell and I have been exploring changing technologies, behaviors, and organizations, and what this means for you. 
Our monthly show takes a deep dive into these issues, and shorter episodes focus on hot topics and emerging trends. Visit marketingpodcasts.net or search for FIR Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.